Welcome back to Advice for Grad Students. I'm your host, Phil Hahn, and uh, uh, today I have Chris Burns, who's a Social Media and Communications Coordinator at MIT Security Studies Program. Just uh, the standard disclaimer, the views expressed today are our own and don't necessarily reflect those of our own institutions. So uh, Chris, you're gonna talk about uh, uh, photographs today. Uh, so over to you, what advice do you have uh, as far as photographs? Oh, great, thanks for having me again. Um, I actually did my gr own graduate work in uh, photography down in Louisiana. And so this is right in my wheelhouse of information. Um, one of my biggest initiatives here at MIT has been to sort of professionalize the overall um, aesthetic uh, and branding of the security studies program. And one of the most important parts of that for me has been improving the quality of the photographs that are present on our website and social media accounts. And so I'm going to sort of give a little 10 minute lecture that will touch on why these why having good images are important and sort of how you should go about uh, contracting with someone in order to get good professional images. I'll sort of open this off by saying that at this point in your career, you're a graduate student, it's 100% necessary to hire a professional photographer to make photographs that you're gonna use, especially when you go on the job market. Um, this is a this is a purchase that shouldn't cost more than five hundred dollars. You know, it's not a huge thing that you have to shell out for, um, but this will sort of keep you in good photographs for let's say the next ten years. You know, and if you hire the right photographer and you give them the right instructions, then this one five hundred dollar uh, purchase, you know, you should be able to get let's say ten individual images in which you are wearing different clothes and which are taken in different settings and so each of these images will feel like truly um, uh, singular unique photographs they won't just feel like you have 10 copies of uh, basically the same image um, my biggest suggestion is to hire a photographer hire a professional photographer if you need to find a professional photographer that you can trust you can always contact uh, if you go to MIT, but I think even not if you're in Boston, you can contact the MIT Communications Initiative Office. They uh, host a list of trusted photography vendors in that office, and they can probably give you the best advice in terms of which particular photographer to hire. Um, my suggestion would be to hire someone for at least two hours, um, and that will give you plenty of time to do some wardrobe changes and some location changes so that Again, you're not just getting 10 copies of the same photograph. Any photographer with experience uh, working at any university where you might go um, has photographed enough times on that campus that they should be able to help you figure out exactly where and at what time you should meet for photographs. Um, university campuses tend to just have great aesthetics. There's you know just tons of brick and stone and sort of nice quads. Uh, making photographs outside is relatively easy and then also universities tend to have huge uh, spaces well-lit spaces with large windows and that's great for making photographs inside as well the um the one thing that you would want to do right off the bat is i'm going to share this screen here is you're going to go onto google and you're just going to type into images you're going to type um, headshot styles or really any combination of headshots and something else and you're going to get a really long Google image result list with tons of different ideas for how you can sort of uh, make your photo, uh, I guess, how you can give instructions to the photographer about how you'd like to look. Um, this will range from something that's, you know, quite commercial or quite business oriented. These photographs that have the sort of studio photograph look, they tend to be more associated with businesses. So as an academic, you probably want to stay away from using any sort of a backdrop um, or making it look like your photograph was literally taken in a studio. Um, and uh, you might also see uh, a lot of listings will come up for like actors, headshots, actors, photographs. And that's not really what you want either. They tend to be sort of stylized and they're meant to make their um, subjects appear 
more luxurious, you know, more higher end than you might actually look in reality. And if you're applying for an academic job, it uh, will seem a little bit gauche. It'll seem a little bit pretentious for you to have a photograph like that. So you sort of want to try and find a happy medium um, between sort of uh, commercial high end, but you also don't want to push so far uh, into this space where you're working with someone who usually works with musicians and actors that's sort of like a different space entirely um so i've never i've never looked at any of these headshot images so i'm just going to pick out some that i would say you know look somewhat similar to what an academic would like to find um this one looks pretty nice the lighting is it, the lighting is clear um the lighting looks really nice but we're not just seeing a sterile backdrop, you know, we're putting this person into a particular place. Um, so the nice thing about going to university, again, is that uh, if you want to look like an academic, probably the best thing that you can do is have a photograph that was made on a university's campus and, you know, try and include some information in the background that sort of um, highlights the fact that you're probably on a university campus. Um, Something like this is kind of the classic academic photograph, right? We, we would be in, in some sort of an academic space, some sort of a, um, a classroom building. We have really nice light and we have the uh, researcher or the academic sort of centered in the frame, uh, looking really inviting. Something that you'd wanna also avoid is something like colored lights, um, anyone whose photographs have more than one quality of light, meaning that um, this blue area on this woman's face is natural light. This orange area on her face is artificial light coming from inside. You wanna avoid having mixed lights. We just wanna be seeing one light source. Um, that's probably good enough. Let's go back over. Uh, in terms of cost, you know, if you're going to hire someone for two hours and you're going to ask them to do, you know, five or six different locations on campus with maybe two to three wardrobe changes, I'd expect to be paying around $500 for that session. In a bigger city like Boston, you might be looking at closer to 750 and that's only just because photographs in these cities cost more. Worst comes to worst, if you are at MIT and you need a photograph and you really don't feel like paying for money, my suggestion is go down the infinite hallway and have your friend with the newest iPhone that they can find take your picture right in front of a window. You know, worst comes to worst, that photo is not going to be bad. It's not going to be as great as some of the photographs that I just showed you, but it will look professional and it will look like you're in an academic setting, which are the kind of the two most important things. In terms of clothing and images, that's an important one. And you want to think about how you want to be portrayed in this image, right? So in general, academic aesthetics are professional, but informal. So um, a man might wear a jacket, but it's, I would, I would really find it odd if they were wearing a tie. Um, a woman might wear professional clothing, but a really dark colored suit might be seen as a bit too formal. Um, that being said, some people just prefer to be seen as formal and they prefer for people to see them on their website, uh, you know, sort of exhibiting formality. And if that's the case, you know, go with the suit and tie, go with the dark colored, you know, um, suit for women, but keep in mind, you know, who's gonna be looking at these images and what kind of, um, what kind of information are you giving them in these images? It's also important to think about who you are and, Within, within academic fields like political science, there's, there's often not a lot of room or space for personalization within like a, a job market application, like your CV, your um, cover letter, um, all of these things are, they sort of have a, a very specific process and they're meant to give, uh, give out very specific information about you. Um, so the photograph and particularly the photograph on your website is one of the only places where you'll be able to personalize yourself and you'll be able to give information about who you are and not so much information about what your research is. So um, don't be afraid to show off your personality in the images. Um, you don't want to go crazy. Like you don't want to be doing wacky faces in the images, 
but working, you know, a Star Wars character or like a little Star Wars figurine into that photograph is a way to let these people know that you have individual interests beyond your research interests. It allows you to be seen as more of a full person. Um, and it's one of the very few places in a in an application where you can sort of exercise that. And for both men and women, um, don't be afraid to either hire a friend or hire a professional to do your makeup. Um, it just makes every photograph better. There's a reason why everyone on TV, whether they're male or female, have makeup. Um, no one will notice in the photograph that you have it on, especially for men. I think that's a constant concern, but it really does make everything about a photograph so much easier later on because you're not worried about slight imperfections and things that you might have to change. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Well, that, that's fantastic. I, I really appreciate you drawing attention to this aspect of a graduate career. So we focus so much on research and content, and sometimes we forget about how we're going to be uh, perceived. So I really appreciate this uh, topic today on uh, photography. And uh, um, anyway, that's all the time we have today for advice for grad students. Thanks a lot. Yep, sure.